welcome back to the girly girl bookworm so it's like 6 45 in the morning before work but i wanted to get this filmed because we have an unexpected trip that we have to take out of state for a funeral so i wanted to make sure that this got filmed before i left because this is long overdue i finished these books as of sunday so it's now like two days later so i didn't want these to get like any farther out of my brain so i'm gonna get this started um i'm Gonna talk very little about the first book that I read because I did an entire review for it. So if you haven't checked it out, it's definitely on my channel. The first book that I read this week is The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. Um, so like I said, I had this in exchange for an honest review from NetGalley. And guys, this book comes out today. So if you have not pre-ordered it or you have not checked it out yet, go watch that video again and get this book because this book is really good. So thanks again to NetGalley and St. Martin's Press. Five out of five stars. I'm, you know me, I'm in love with Diane Chamberlain as it is, but like this one I was nervous about and it didn't disappoint. So definitely go check out that review for that one. Then at another point I was listening to an audiobook and I was also reading at the same time. So I did these two books kind of like concurrently. And um, my audiobook was The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I had been avoiding this book, like the plague, for no apparent reason. I love Kate Quinn's work, but normally she writes like Renaissance Rome or like ancient Rome. So like having a book that takes place, and I believe World War um, Two, yeah, World War Two, and I believe World War I, um, it was very like different than anything that she's written in the past. So... I decided that I saw this on audiobook and it was like a 15 hour audiobook so I had kind of been avoiding it because of that too but I finally bit the bullet and I read it and it alternates perspectives between 1915 and 1947. Um, 1947 starts off with this woman she comes to Europe to basically get an abortion and she, but really in the back of her mind she really is there because she wants to find her friend um, they used to live over in Europe, but then they moved away and they lost contact She, um, within the war, so she wants to find her friend. And she bumps into Eve, who is the 1915 perspective, so Eve is kind of going back into her past to explain, like, her life. And I don't really want to say too much more because I feel like that's kind of spoilery and I'd rather you just figure it out for yourself. But, um... Eve is obviously a spy in this Alice network, so we get to see the in and outs of this spy group. And I gave this book four out of five stars. Originally, I was only going to give it three because I really didn't care for Eve's story. Like, I really liked Charlotte's um, or Charlie's perspective, but Eve was kind of just a brute. And so, because she was so brutish in Charlotte's perspective, I didn't care to read her perspective too much. Um, but by the end, I was really caring for all these characters, and I was, like, rooting for them, and I was, like, really happy for them, and I was scared for them. So, by the end, I realized it's probably more of a four-star read, but I didn't love it as much as I've loved other Kate Quinn stuff, and I just look, she has another story coming out in this time period, and I feel like I'm, like, go back to Rome, I like that better. Um, so, I don't know if I'll pick that one up. Um, which is weird because, like, I've read everything she's written, but I don't know if I have interest in picking that one up, so we'll have to wait and see. At the same time I was listening to that one, I was reading Autumn Brides by Katherine Springer, Kate Ganscher, and Beth K. Voigt. I forgot when I made my, um, so I have, like, a hair on my lip. I forgot when I made my fall TBR that I have the bind-ups of Autumn Brides and... Um, to have and to hold, which is another short story collection of autumn weddings, and I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot to put this in my fall TBR. And I wanted something that was going to be light and easy, especially considering I was like listening to this, which was very like dense. So I wanted something that was not going to be as dense. And I gave this book three stars. I liked the first one, the middle story I really liked, and then the third story was kind of meh. Um, the hard part is with stor short stories is you don't get the stories fleshed out. And I feel like as a fleshed out story, it would be really good. But as a short story, it kind of misses things or like glazes over things. So I enjoyed it. They read really quickly. So I would recommend it. But it's just not going to be like something that you like love, I feel like. So I'm going to get to the, autumn, the other autumn story probably later on in this month. But I got this done. 
And then I picked up another audiobook and I listened to A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This is another book that was one of my like most intimidating books because for some reason I was really nervous about the content and the size. But the size actually it was only like just 400 pages so I don't know why that intimidated me. But I listened to this on audiobook, another like 15-14 hour audiobook and I am definitely the one that does not agree with the general population. The general population loves this book and I did not. Um, this follows a woman named Ruth, which is, this drove me nuts the whole time. Um, cause Ruth Ozeki also narrates it. So Ruth is narrating it. It's by Ruth and there's a character named Ruth, which was driving me crazy. And, um, Ruth finds her husband finds this lunchbox, and inside this Hello Kitty lunchbox is a journal of um, a girl named Now. And so we alternate perspectives between Ruth and Now, and eventually it just got to be too much. Like, I felt like I didn't know what was going on, I was bored, and it just got very crude, very abusive, very sexual, and just, like, not what I wanted. And I'm not saying, like, that's not realistic, so I, like, I can't hate the book for going there, but, like, I just, like, didn't want it to go there. And it kept, like, circling back to it, which was, like, stop, I get it, leave. And then, like, by the end, all of a sudden, like, it was, like, paranormally with, like, ghosts and visions, and I was, like, no. So, unfortunately, I did not like this book, and I gave this book two stars. At the end, I just, like, powered through. Like, it was Sunday night, and I just literally, like, plugged the headphones in, and I just, like, sat there, and I, like, droned it and finished it because I was, like, I don't even care about this book anymore. I don't want this to go into another day. But I felt like because of, like, what happened with this book and how I liked it by the end, I felt like I needed to give this to the end. I regret it because I don't like this book at all. So that stinks. And then the last book that I read this week was The Towering Sky by Catherine McGee. This is the third and final book in the Thousandth Floors trilogy and I love this trilogy. I had a really hard time writing my review for this on my blog because I feel like this series is such a character driven series that like a lot happened but like at the same time not a lot happened. So like it's hard to be like this is 400 pages, let me tell you all about them, because I, like, I know what happened, but, like, at the same time, it's hard to talk about. This is set in the future, but it's more like a gossipy girl, like, pretty little liars kind of story set in the future. So as much as it's sci-fi and dystopian, because clearly they live in a building that's a thousand floors, um, but I still really enjoyed it. You get to meet the rich of the rich, the poor of the poor, and the people in the middle, and how their lives interconnect, and drama, and murder and I feel like if you like the sounds of that like if you like a contemporary drama filled story set in the future you'll really like this trilogy the fl the pages as much as they're all over 400 pages they fly by like I read this in one day so I think you can do it too well actually I didn't read it all in one day I, I lied Saturday I read 60 pages and I probably would have continued reading it except we had things to do because it was my mom's birthday. So that's a lie. I did not read it one day but I probably could have because I finished this the same day. So I would have finished those 60 pages within this day. I kept saying to myself I'm just going to get to this next chapter. Next chapter I'm going to go full laundry. Next chapter I'm going to do this and I kept just being like never mind <laughs> and I just kept reading. So definitely a 5 out of 5 stars. But this one. The book that I'm currently reading right now is um, Since We Fell by Denise Lehane. This is Denise. This is Dennis. Dennis Lehane. I am listening to this on audiobook right now and so far so good. I don't have any complaints about it right now. So far we're following this woman and she is a like reporter and her mom like wouldn't tell her who her father is so the beginning is her trying to figure out who her father is and now we're at the point where she's in the height of her reporter career and something doesn't seem like it's going too good for her right now so I'm intrigued to figure out what's going to happen. Tonight we're leaving for Maryland like I said for that funeral so I'm probably going to listen to this in the car because of the fact that it's going to be night when we leave. So I'll definitely probably want to do this. I have no idea what else I'm going to bring. I don't know if we're going to bring the iPad. I don't know if we're going to bring, if I'm going to bring a physical book. I don't know what my status is going to be when I get there. So I want to bring something just in case. I just don't know what. So 
thank you for letting me film this ahead of time. I definitely wanted to get so much more done. I had so many video ideas, so I'm kind of a little like annoyed with myself because I was like, I've got all these ideas and now I have to put them on hold. So I hope you at least enjoyed having this one to listen to for now. And I will see you guys as soon as I get back. Bye, everybody.